Hey guys, this is Chris. It has been a long time. Sorry about that. I thought I'd come in and it is the middle of the night, so the lighting is terrible, but I thought I'd come in and do kind of a quick update video. That was what I thought. I got a new camera for Christmas, so I shot the video with that and about 15 minutes into it, the sound just went away because I must have been holding it oddly or in a weird way or something. But anyway, um, I'm back to my trusty iPad where I kind of know what I'm doing at least. And I'll use that. You know what? This doesn't even look nearly as good. But anyway, this is what it is. So, I hope everybody had a great holiday. I haven't seen you guys since it was before Thanksgiving probably. So I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, a very Merry Christmas, or Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, or Solstice, or whatever it is that you might celebrate, and a Happy New Year. Um, anyway, I'm just going to kind of start firing off what I did. I was in a stitch along with, it started out with me and Heather from the Springfield Stitcher. And I'll try to link all these channels below if I think about it. Um, I'm really bad about that, but anyway, I will give it a shot. So I started Cinnamon Stars. This is from the Plum Street Sampler. We started this on November 1st with Stitch Mania. It was kind of a sal within a sal. It was the 5F's fall family food, friends, and fun, maybe, something like that. So we have food. There's pumpkins, and we have a little scarecrow who... His name is, ooh, god, that looks terrible. I hope it looks better when I upload it. But anyway, there's a little scarecrow, and his name is Blaine, because my butt head coworker, when I was working on this at work, said this was the stupidest thing he'd ever seen. So I named the scarecrow after him. So his name is Blaine. But there's pumpkins for food. There's a scarecrow for friends. There's a house for home. Um... There's a G for my last name, so there's family, and it was very, very fun to stitch. I stitched it uh, two over one on the recommended fabric. It was 35 count chamomile tea from RPR Reproductions, <clears throat> and I used all the recommended threads, so one over two if I didn't say that, and I just love it. I counted the stars, but I don't remember. I think there were 29 or 31 or something crazy like that. This was just an absolute joy to stitch. Other people who ended up in the stitch along with us are Tara C, who is absolutely fabulous, and Tracy P, who is so, so funny. And if there's anybody else I don't know about you, and I'm sorry and I apologize, please don't feel left out, but jump in. I think Frankie Archer maybe it was Frankie Archer, had commented that she had it in her stash and was thinking about starting it as well. So Heather finished right before, well, not right before, she's finished maybe a week before I did. And I had put it down. I don't know why I put it down because I loved it. But I put it down and she kind of gave me the kick in the butt to pick it back up. And I, I powered through that and I got it done the day after Christmas, I believe, December 26th. So, Cinnamon Stars by the Plum Street Sampler. This might, might be my favorite thing that I've ever, ever stitched in my life. I just love it. So, there is that. My other finish, I can't even believe I'm showing you guys this because it's kind of embarrassing, is Lizzie Kate's Jingle All the Way. <clears throat> oh, God, you don't want to see a close-up. The stitching's fine. Like, I, I did fine on the stitching. I do not know how to sew. So, when I show it to people, I hold it like this. This was one of my mother's Christmas gifts. And when I ordered this, or when I got this, rather, I got it at my LNS, it I thought it had the threads in it. I should have known that it didn't because the price was was too reasonable. But it came with the fabric, the backing fabric, the embell oops, the embellishments, which include the bells, little jingle bells, little snowflakes. Um, I can't sew, and it was a Christmas gift from my mother, who is a seamstress. So she just would never let me use her machine growing up. And I couldn't remember how to thread the thing. I, I just, I don't know. So I did the best I could, which was not great. But I, I, I sewed it. I stuffed it. She pulled it out of the bag on Christmas. And she just started laughing like, oh, God. It's embarrassing that you're my daughter and you don't know how to sew. I should have taught you. 
So she's going to rip it apart and she's going to fix it. And hopefully at the same time teach me finally how to sew. So that was my November stitching in December. Also in December, I picked up my Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Merry Christmas Town. I started it the day it came out and I think I had gotten like the pink done. I got the white in the beard. I got like this white, this white, because I wanted to get the white in, you know, so that it didn't pick up the colors off of everything else. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm cuted out. I, I can't frost a pumpkin anymore. So it was December 1st and there was the Winter Wonderland. Is that what it was called? Winter Wonderland Sal from Stitch Mania. I thought, well, okay, I, I'm going to stitch this at work. I'm done with Cinnamon Stars. I'm going to take this to work and work on it. So I finished out part one. And the needle minders are from Gina. Gina's Unique Needle Minders. So I finished out part one. And I got over to part two. And again, I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't cute it anymore. I will finish this. I also stopped my um, story time sampler at May. I haven't done past May. Kind of for the same, same reason. I just, I love it. But I'm just, you know, there's other things I would rather work on. So I put that away. And then in the one, two, three, oops, needle minders. In the one, two, three stitch order where I had to buy the thread, I also picked up a couple of other things as well. I have put a moratorium on myself for 2016, and I've heard a lot of other stitchers talking about this as well. I have more stash than I will ever use in my lifetime, even if we doubled my lifetime. So short of winning the Powerball jackpot, I am not buying any patterns or kits in 2016 unless it's something limited edition or special or, or something of that nature. So anyway, this is one of the kits I bought myself. Something I just, I thought was cute and I wanted it. And it's a gold collection petite from Dimension. It's called Christmas on the Beach. I took that to work for a few days and worked on it. And that is how far I got. Not very far. This Ada, well, you guys have probably all done Dimension kits. This Ada is stiff. It was hurting. It sounds not, it was hurting my fingers to like work on it so yeah it's gone so that's put away for now and then the Doctor Who season finale came around and I love Doctor Who and you guys know that I love Doctor Who so I pulled out my clouds pattern clouds factory pattern for the Doctor Who Biscorno and I stitched up the front this is just a piece of I think it's 28 count silver even weave. It's, yeah, it's not linen. It's even weave. It's been in my stash. It was actually in use on a what I have determined to be a UFO. So I frogged what was stitched on it, and I thought, well, it's sparkly. It's Doctor Who. It should be sparkly for outer space. So I started this. I finished the front. I'm sorry, that's shaky. My hand is bothering me. I have um, tendonitis and, and carpal tunnel and stuff. So when I hold on to things for too long, including the iPad mic, which is what it's doing now, my hands will start to cramp. Sorry about that. So I finished the top and then I started on the bottom. And I'm almost halfway done with that. Looking at this fabric, is it sucks to stitch on. I don't enjoy it, which is probably why I didn't finish what I was stitching on in the first place. But I do like it for this project, so... It kind of, it occludes the, the holes, and I don't, I know you're supposed to count threads and not holes, but I count, count holes because that's what I do. So, yeah, I'm going to finish that up. I found instructions. Clouds Factory doesn't send instructions along with the pattern on how to finish things, so I didn't know. I know I, uh, Carolyn had done a, a video on it, a tutorial. So I'll watch that again before I do it. But I, I found instructions on another site, and it, it's fairly straightforward. It shouldn't be too bad. So that's that. And then we get to... And every time I move stuff, you're going to hear a jingle. Then we get to January 1st. So we get through Christmas. We get through the holidays. 
and January 1st was the start of Chatelaine shenanigans from Stitch Mania. Yeah, Stitch Mania. There's so many different styles going on in so many different groups that I kind of just, I overlap them. But this is the beginning of Hortus Viridarium, and I will try to insert a picture of Hortus Viridarium. It terrified me. I was so afraid to take that first stitch. Uh, I worked on this for a couple of hours, maybe three, I think, on New Year's morning. The only DMC is the 333, this purple ish, purplish, bluish. Everything else is silk, and I, it's been a while since I stitched with silk, and I had forgotten just how incredibly lovely. Oh god, it's so soft. This was a kit uh, from European Classic. This is just a 28 count antique white linen. So it's gorgeous. And I only worked on it just those couple of hours. And I should mention a couple of bags from So Much to Love. This lives in this bag when I'm not working on it. My Little Mermaid bag. So cute. And then my next project is Tree of Hope from Mirabilia. I decided, and I heard uh, some other people talking as well, decided that every January 1, oh, my hand is shaky, I'm so sorry, I am going to start a Mirabilia. Even though I didn't finish Persephone, I am going to start a Mirabilia. And this has been eating its way into my heart, sitting in my stash. And I believe Stitching May started it as well on the 1st. And I know the lovely array, Mackenzie, also has it in her stash. So I started this on the 1st, and I worked on it for a few hours. And I got, like, I got some of the tree done and some of the bird. The bird's name is Penelope. I do not know why the bird's name is Penelope. And I worked on it some yesterday. I kind of started here and went up, finished off the bird. I'd done the white part of the bird, finished off the bird. This is on 32 count, no it's not, it's on 28 count Jobelin and Willow Wisp from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. The needle minder is from Gina. And she lives, it lives rather, in this pretty bag from So Much to Love. I should mention, I had been using these bags, a combination of these bags, which everybody has, and they're good, they're good bags, they're fine. Nothing wrong with them. From uh, I got them from Amazon. The zippers were all down for me. So, yeah. So now I'm so much to loving it as much as I can, you know, afford to sensibly buy them. And then my third start was Restless Tonight. And that is for a couple different things. I'm going to say it's New Year, New Start, and a whole bunch of groups. As well as the real thing it's for is um, the Cross Stitch Finish Line group started a paid stitch along on January 1st. And I just, I was really ready to go to sleep, but I went ahead and I put in 97 stitches. There's three little, um, three little stragglers in there that I didn't put in. And look, I'm, I'm kind of parking. See? It makes me very anxious. But there are threads hanging. So I'm using Carolyn's method. This is two over one on 28 count magic. So that's that. And now I will do, should I do the story about New Year's Day and I felt like I was going to die? Anyway, I tried to go to bed. I was so tired and I was really exhausted. I've been up about it unintentionally. I didn't do it on purpose, but I've been up many hours, like 20-ish. And, you know, I could do that 20 years ago. Now, not so much. There's another So Much to Love bag. She had a sale. She had a moving sale. And this, I love the Saints. They're my team, even though they pretty much suck most of the time. Um, yeah, so I ordered that. And it was on sale, so that was good. Um... But anyway, I, I just, every time I tried to lie down and go to sleep, my heart felt like it was racing. My pulse was high. 
and I was miserable. Um, actually, called the doctor to see if I should go to the emergency room because, you know, sometimes you just don't feel right. Like you don't know what it what's up, but you don't feel good and normal. And I, like, I truly felt like I was dying. And if I call the doctor, I I feel like I'm dying. Had my doctor been the one on call for the group, she would have immediately told me to go to the emergency room because she knows me well enough to be like, wow, Chris, Chris called, Chris, thumbs up, go to the ER. Um, but anyway, the doctor was like, ah, yeah, it's probably your thyroid or perimenopause, early onset or something stupid like that. You're fine. I'll see you in the office next week. So I, um, I got to work on Monday. And after, as soon as we got patients settled, I did an EKG on myself, which was fine. I had a doctor's appointment last week. My doctor was only in in the evenings, which doesn't work for me with my schedule. So, um, I saw the nurse practitioner, everything checks out. I am as usual, fat, but healthy. My blood pressure, I mean, I'm on no medications. My blood pressure is normal. My blood sugar is, runs a little bit low. It's just stupid. I, I should have all these health problems that I don't have, and I'm very fortunate that I don't. They're not sure what's going on, so I'm going to have some more extensive blood work. If it happens again, they're going to put a 72-hour a halter on me just to see. But she really thinks everything's fine and that it was just kind of a combination of exhaustion, a little bit of anxiety and stuff. But anyway, uh, that was my... And then I didn't cross stitch at all because I thought maybe the little twingy, painy feelings that I was having was from having stitched so much. Because I stitched that whole day. It was dumb. And then I was like, God, if I'm that out of shape, that stitching makes me hurt and makes me think I'm dying. I need to get in better shape. So that's my 2016 goal is to get into better shape eat better, all that good stuff, and just try to be healthy. Instead of fat and healthy, maybe be thin and healthy. So that's my 2016 goal. All right, so on to haul. Other haul. I just showed you some of the haul. But anyway, when I put the one, two, three stitch order in where I got the Christmas on the beach, I also got Believe, another little dimensions kit. I just always like this. I've seen other people post, post it. I thought it was cute. I bought it. I bought all the threads, and they're already put away, so I'm not going to show you those. I needed some thread to couch an old project. These are for something. I don't know what. Oh, they're for this. And then I bought Joy, Ornamental Joy, Country Cottage Needleworks, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite designers. I love Country Cottage Needleworks. I ordered one. I need to contact them about this. I think I sent them an email, and they didn't reply. They sent me two. I paid for one. They sent me two, so we need to get that strained out because I, I feel like I'm stealing and I need to get that back to them. So because I decided no more patterns and stuff in 2016, I mean, if I need threads to work on something that I already have, I'm allowed to do that. DMC-ish type threads. So I decided I have Get Cracking, Cracking, Get Cracking sitting by. So I ordered the silks for that. I ordered some weeks and some gas that I needed for some other things from 123 Stitch. So basically, my decision to stop buying things put me into a buying frenzy to get things that I knew I absolutely really, really wanted to have. So I got I got the stuff for Get Crackin'. Two of the threads were unavailable through 123 Stitch, so I had to put a Stitching Bits and Bobs order in. And you all know stitching bits and bobs can be a little frustrating. So these were the two threads. It was slate green and olive berry. I have no idea how to pronounce that. But anyway, those were the threads. I couldn't just order those threads. I had to order some patterns because I had to order some patterns. So I got Afternoon in London. And because I love it. And Afternoon in Paris, because I love it. And Ink Circles, Little Alien Schoolgirl. B 
because my boyfriend really wants me to stitch this. So I got it. He just thinks it's adorable. As usual with stitching bits and bobs, uh, their customer service is lacking. They kind of are like, okay, here, I'm not going to tell you anything is out of stock until you inquire about it three weeks later when your order never arrives, but we've taken your money. Isn't, I mean, it's not the best way to do things. I would prefer to know when I am putting something into my cart that it's not immediately available. That's just me. I would prefer an email telling me, oh, hey, you ordered these things and this isn't available and we're just going to hold your entire order up. What they tend to do, at least in my experience, is you order your things and then you think, oh, it's like a week later, I should have my things. I wonder why my things aren't here. And then you go in and there's no easy way to look. You have to like copy and paste your order and your last name and all that. It's unnecessary. They don't provide any tracking or anything. At least not at that point. And then you go in and it's like something that you ordered is on back order. We will ship it as soon as it's available. And it's like, well, gee, I wonder if it's one thing or all of my things or oh, I wonder how long it will take. And then every week you check and they still haven't shipped it. This time it only took about two and a half, three weeks. It wasn't long. I was afraid I was going to run into their holiday break. And I don't know why I was worried about it because I'm not, I don't need the stuff, but I want the stuff. When I order it, I want it to show up. So anyway, I have the stuff and I'm not ordering more patterns. So I got my, my fabrics of the month. I'm missing my sale order from Stephanie. I got it. I don't know where I put it. It's not with my fabrics. It's nowhere downstairs. It's nowhere upstairs. I, I, I don't know. It probably got put somewhere when we were decorating for Christmas. I, I don't know. I was just not here. And rather than stress about where it is, I'm just not going to show you any fabric. I'm not going to show you my jodery threads because you know what other people have showed those to you anyway so you don't really need to see them I got a couple of other patterns during Black Friday sales um, Clouds Factory I got a couple I printed them out and they're in the other room on the printer so I'm not going to go get those and a couple from Satsuma Street <clears throat> and I emailed the Satsuma Street lady and I'm sorry I don't know her name and it's like I love your pretty little city series I would love a pretty little Philadelphia. I went to school in Philadelphia, so I love Philly. And a pretty little New Orleans in case, you know, you're looking for ideas. And she said, you know, those are really popular requests. So, you know, hopefully someday soon you'll see those. So that would be awesome. I don't really have anything else to say. I'm just going to continue to do my, I'm going to stitch whatever the heck I feel like stitching method. That seems to work the best for me. I would like to get this um, Dr. Hoopa's Corner done and out of the way and get a finish in for 2016. I only had six finishes for 2015. I have a lot of big projects, bigger projects, and um, I was start happy. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll just, I don't know. I'll work on what I have and, and what I feel like working on. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing and liking and commenting. You guys are awesome. And I love you guys. And I hope everybody is having a great stitchy year. See you later. Bye.